Do you ever go to a winery and just fall in love? That's what happened to me here. We're going to be in Napa Valley in Calistoga. We're going to be visiting Madrigal Vineyards. Madrigal is run by a family that has been making, uh, growing grapes and making wine in the uh, valley for uh, generations at this point. And they are doing some amazing stuff. They've worked with some of the best growers and makers in the uh, valley for years. And uh, it's all come home at Madrigal Vineyards. Uh, we're going to meet Chris Madrigal and uh, Alejandro uh, uh, Tovar. And you're going to have a great time. These are great people, great wine. I really loved almost every one of these wines was just off the charts. And uh, we're going to be joined by uh, Italy Elizabeth Smith, who is a uh, travel, food, and wine writer. So we're going to have a great time. You're going to find a lot of fun uh, visiting one of the oldest working families in the uh, Napa Valley. Come on, let's go. Today we're in Napa Valley in Calistoga, and we're at Madrigal Vineyard. And today we're going to learn about one of the oldest families in wine, the Madrigal family. The first Madrigals arrived to the United States as rail workers in the 1930s. Chris Madrigal says his family started at the bottom. They picked apples, walnuts, and grapes. They were among the first Mexican families in the Upper Valley. In 1974, the family moved to Marin County. Chris's dad, Jesse, started pruning at vineyards on the weekends. When he retired from the military in 1976, he started doing vineyard management full-time. It was then that Jesse started the family's vineyard management company that today manages more than 800 acres. Chris Madrigal began to work with his father's vineyard management company in 1985. They managed the vineyards of Clos Pegas and Dacorn wineries and helped grow grapes at Cake Bread Cellars and Chateau Montalena. Chris got into the winemaking program and attended UC Davis Viticulture and Enology program in the early 1990s. Madrigal Winery and Vineyard is located between St. Helena and Calistoga. Current production is just under 10,000 cases. My partner in crime on this tasting was Dr. Elizabeth Smith. She's a well-known uh, travel, food, and wine journalist, and she certainly wears blue better than I do. Madrigal Sauvignon Blanc. This wine is bright, clean, refreshing. Tropical notes uh, mingle with uh, things like uh, peach, pear, melon. Also big dollops of uh, lemon, a hint of solidity. Perfect for shellfish and for salads. Loved it. Madrigal La Vida Rosa. A uh, big nose and palate of strawberries and watermelon with hints of lemon and limes at the end. Bright juicy, refreshing. Nuestra Sangre is 80% Merlot and 20% Petit Verdot. I'm going to let Alejandro tell you all about it. Hello everyone, my name is Alejandro and welcome, bienvenidos a Madrigal Family Winery. So today I brought out a 2015 Nuestra Sangre. The Nuestra Sangre is going to be a classic Bordeaux blend made out of the uh, Merlot varietal. The, uh, this blend is going to be 80% Merlot and 20% Petit Verdot. And just right behind me are the vines that we use um, to, for the production of the Merlot here. So uh, these vines were planted back in 1980 and there are some historic vines here on the property. Uh, this property used to belong to Mr. Dan Duckhorn in the Duckhorn portfolio. And this uh, Merlot here was the main component to his Merlot being distributed around the country. Now we call this blend Nuestra Sangre, which means our blood. It has two different meanings. One, the first meaning is going to be about the property, since it was the, a Duckhorn Park property back in the day called the Alluvial Vineyard. But most importantly, it's going to be about that, those family bonds that keep the family together during this time. The Madrigal family has been in Calistoga and in California since 1938. Uh, they came over from Mexico back in uh, 1938 here there were migrant farm workers they worked here in cattle ranches and some walnuts and uh, went over to pick apples in Sebastopol so um, they had 12 children one of the 12 Jesus Madrigal started his vineyard um, 
endeavors in 1970 and uh, developed venues for duck horn. That's how the duck horn relationship came together. So this is a cheers uh, to this wine. It's a nice full bodied red, uh, really surprisingly, really velvety, a lot of cranberry, very fresh fruit in there. Medium in the palate, you get a little more tobacco, a little bit of spice, and it ends with a nice, good um, punch at the end. Enjoy. I love this wine. This was very much like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Uh, he gave her class and he, she gave him sex appeal. The Merlot gives this wine the structure and the Petit Verdot gives it a lushness that is hard to describe. Fantastic wine. As we were sitting near the Merlot block, though, uh, they had two different trellis systems. And I asked Chris Madrigal why that was. Very interesting question. Um, so this is all uh, Mer Merlot. It's on a liar system. Um, and we planted this in 1989 before we bought the vineyard. And so what, I was developing vineyards for Duckhorn Vineyards. And in 1989, Dan Duckhorn bought this with Dennis Fife. And they thought that this would be the happy method to grow high quality grapes with saving la for saving labor. Um, it grows nice grapes. But as, after I bought the vineyard in 1995, we went to much more of a closed space trellis. We go to a vertical trellis. So there's about 500 vines per acre here. There's 2,700 vines per, per acre here. It costs about at least double to farm this. This produces awesome Merlot, but I mean this, if you can do this, it, it is incredible. And initially we even went to the plans when I was working this out with my father, that we were gonna work the land with a horse. You know, drinking several glasses of wine, it sounds like a great idea, right? The vineyard's all planted. And then my dad looks at me one day and he says, okay, when are you gonna get the horse? And I said, what do you mean when are you gonna get, when am I gonna get the horse? I thought you were gonna get the horse. So we never got the horse. We never, we never put a horse in there. So everything's hand labor in there. But that's why, I do, that's why we have this in there. Uh, Dan Duckhorn thought that this would be the wave of the future. Absolutely an outstanding wine. Alejandro is going to tell you about this next wine. Hello. Today we're going to be also trying the 2017 Tres Tesoros. Uh, this wine here is a uh, traditional Spanish blend, with, but with a California twist to it. So this is this wine here is 80% Tempranillo, 15% Petit Syrah, and 5% Garnacha. It's really lush, fruit forward, really velvety. Think of it when you go to Spain and you try those Rioja wines, you want some tapas, you want some manchego, you want some jamón serrano. This wine right here is gonna get you all those flavors and it's gonna, go, it's gonna be a very good food pairing wine with all its lushness and its elegance. Enjoy my friends. All I could tell you is that I've spent a decent amount of time in Spain and I absolutely loved this wine. I brought home several bottles of this one, super impressive. Madrigal Petit Syrah, dark, inky purple, big notes of soft, dark fruit, lots of blackberry compote, supple, tremendous mouthfeel, integrated tannins, complex, well-balanced, elegant. I love Petit Syrah, and this one was spectacular. Madrigal Tempranillo. Now, I'm a big fan of Tempranillo. And this had a fantastic big nose. Lots of red and dark fruit. A nice touch of oak, but extremely really balanced. Uh, very integrated. This is Rioja style Reserva. I absolutely loved it. Madrigal Zinfandel. Huge nose of cherry coke. Vanilla, sexy, earthy undertones. The cherry stays with you all the way through. Big, lush, dark, dark fruit, soft middle, big ending, elegant, refined, lovely wine, terrific finish. Madrigal Petit Syrah Port. Alejandro poured us a hugely impressive Petit Syrah Port. Big, impressive port. Big, deep, dark cherry, fig, cranberry, caramel, amazing. He was even nice enough to take us back behind the curtain to let us taste the unbottled port of the 2018, which was even bigger and more impressive. Madrigal's port is a massive port, brawny and powerful, yet supple and soft as well. Big and jammy, and the flavor stays a long, long time. Pretty fascinating stuff, right? That was a lot of fun. Uh, I have to say a huge, huge thank you to Chris Madrigal and Alejandro Tovar. They did a great job hosting us 
could not have been nicer. The tasting itself was absolutely off the charts. You gotta try these wines if you haven't already. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. And of course, a big, big thank you to uh, Elizabeth Smith, who uh, created this whole uh, uh, tasting for me uh, when I came out to visit. She was like, oh no, you have to go there. Big thank you to her. And like I said, you gotta go uh, try these wines. They were spectacular. Anyway, hope you had a good time and we'll see you next time. Well, that's it for this edition of the Great American Winery Stroop Waffle. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll come back soon. And in the meantime, drink local.